Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I just wanted to talk about dreadlocks and talk about some products that I like to use on my locks. I will get into it. So my dreadlocks are 15 months old. I started them through the comb coil method. And the comb coil method is when your loctician takes a comb and takes some gel, takes a this sectioned hair, combs through it with the gel, and then with the comb, like takes the hair and kind of does a twirly action and creates a spiral. So it almost looks like spiral curls. And those spirals turn into locks. There's other ways to, to, to start dreadlocks. I'm not gonna go into that. There's braids, there's twists, there's other, other methods, but that's how I, I started mine was with comb coils. Some people say that comb coils lock faster than the other methods. And so it's just a really popular way to start your locks. If you have fine hair though, um, sometimes you'll find that uh, it, it might not be the best method for your hair because it might unravel a little bit. Um, so you might want to do braids or some other type of method. If Let me get into the products. So the gel, I mentioned locking gel. This is Talia Wajid, I think I'm saying that right, tight hold gel. And sometimes it looks different. Like sometimes it comes in a blue, blue labeling. You can get this at your local beauty supply store. Online, you can get it. If you buy it online, it's pretty pricey. If you're lucky, you might be able to get it at Walgreens, CVS. I do recommend getting the tight hold. There is a regular formulation and there's a tight hold. I recommend getting the tight hold, especially if you have really fine hair. The reason why I picked this product as well is I find that the product didn't flake and it has a lot of natural ingredients. I was using something called Naughty Boy before and I just found that Naughty Boy flaked a lot and it looked like almost dandruff or something like that and it just scared the shit out of me and I was like, I don't want people to think I have dandruff. You know, a lot of people don't understand dreadlocks as it is and a lot of people think dreadlocks are dirty and the last thing I need is, you know, um, <laughs> you know, for someone to think that I have dandruff or something or that I'm not washing my hair. This does not flake at all. When you pick a locking gel, it's important to pick something that's natural, something that's made for locks. Made for locks. Yes. No wax. Make sure it has no wax in it. It's made for locks. Um, it doesn't have a lot, it doesn't, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, if it's made for locks, it should not leave residue, residue in your hair at all. But I do know some people claim that cream, like lock creams leave residue, then don't use it. Don't use anything that leaves residue. It's gonna be a bitch to get out of your hair because you have locks, you don't have straight, you don't have loose hair anymore. So when you wash your hair, you are really struggling to get certain things out. So uh, just, it's just best not to put things in your hair that's hard to get out in the first place. But yeah, um, so just make sure you get a, lock, a locking gel that's natural, residue free, no wax, and doesn't flake. The next product that I think you should use is black castor oil. Now, a lot of people, I think, get confused by black castor oil because I think people confuse black castor oil with castor oil. This is black castor oil. This is not um, uh, the yellow castor oil. I think this one, I really don't know the difference other than that the black castor oil is supposed to be better for you. I think that the black castor oil probably is not as refined as the the yellow castor oil. That's I'm just gonna go on a hunch and 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 say that. I do know that this one's supposed to be better for you, so make sure you get the black one. And the reason why it's called black castor oil is because literally it is black. That's this is it in my uh, apple care bottle. This is how I apply oil to my dreadlocks. Some people just take it and slather it on. No, use an applicator bottle. You can just squeeze it in the places where it needs. This is a lot faster, a lot lot less messier. Also, another thing to, to note about dreadlocks is that you do not ever, 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 ever want to put oil on the actual lock. Yes, you want to put it only on your scalp. 
this does not need oil. And you're probably wondering, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What causes dreadlocks? Friction and time. Yes, friction and time. So oil is a lubricant. Oil will cause your locks to slide apart and not lock. Or what happened with my locks is that they were partially locking and they were looking ugly and I had to take some of them down because some of them were locking like this. Yup, like, like, like the hair would be just like, it'd be like a big bubble right here and it would just, I'd put my finger in it and that was the hair slipping out of the lock. And people lied to me. That's another thing too you have to be careful about. The dreadlock community is mad co competitive. I'll just take what people say with a grain of salt. Like use your common sense. You know, I kind of use my common sense and I was like, I don't think they should be forming these weird loops. It's almost like the hair is coming out of the lock as it's locking. That just doesn't make sense. How would it ever go back into the lock? And like whenever I would ask people those questions, they would just go off on me. When they get defensive like that, you know they're lying. You're like, okay, you're lying because you can't even scientifically explain what you're talking about. On these hair forums, you know, like there's trolls and they kind of just, you know, say things, you know, just to be funny. Or now, this or is just my experience. Some people, there might be reasons for why some people do put oil in their locks. For the most case, uh, for most cases, you're not gonna ever really need to do that for most cases. So people who do put oil in their locks, like again, you gotta kind of look at their hair and, and see if it's like your hair. If they have coarse hair, their hair is less likely to unravel than fine hair. I've yet to see a fine person, fi fine person, person with a fine person. I've yet to see a fine person. I've yet to see uh, someone with fine hair who really puts it on their actual, you know, lock and not their scalp so i also use coconut oil and i use coconut oil castor oil by far is like a godsend but um i use coconut oil sometimes if i want my hair to smell a certain way coconut oil is a great carrier oil for scents uh so like if you want to put jasmine in in the in the um coconut oil and put it on your hair or vanilla because when it comes to dreadlocks you don't want to put synthetic stuff in your hair so you don't want to put like a lot of synthetic fragrances or uh, sticky stuff in your hair. A lot of dreadlock products smell very earthy. So if you want to smell like kind of like like flowers or kind of girlish, you kind of have to you know mix essential oils into like a carrier oil such as coconut oil or almond oil. And it is a Nag Champa dreadlock tightening spray. I just said a lot. This this product is awesome. I have it in Nag Champa and I also have it in a fragrance called Fresh. And Fresh, it kind of smells like, I don't know how, how to describe Fresh. It smells fresh, like I'm, that's not helping, but it's it kind of it's kind of like um, a, a beach, like the beach and baby powder. Baby powder meets the ocean something or, uh, they, when you spray it, it does go on strong. So don't freak out, it will eventually dissipate and it won't be so like strong smelling. The purpose of this spray is to tighten your locks. This is really good for fine hair or hair that tends to get oily um, because it can take the oils out of the hair. That's why you don't want to spray it on your scalp. You only want to spray it on your locks because you want to get the oil out and you want to get the moisture and some of the stuff that uh, cause it, is it to unravel. And anyway, I, I love this. This is for dreadlocks. It's called Dolly Locks. You can buy it, I think, on their website. And also Amazon sells this as well. It's $16. I know, or at least when I bought it, it was $16. I know that sounds like a lot of money, but this lasts forever. And I spray this a lot. And it, it lasts forever. It then another thing I use is this. This is by Shea Moisture and it's called Dry Scalp Elixir. This is really good if you have psoriasis, dandruff, eczema to spray on your scalp. I used to spray this after I worked out and it just balances your pH. And this is really cool because it has tea tree oil in it, it has plant enzyme, um, I'm sorry, plantain enzyme, <laughs> excuse me. Um, it has willow bark extract and it has some other stuff. It has charcoal powder, um, aloe vera, leaf juice, uh, honey supple extract, extract, dry scalp elixir. This is really good. Use this over Jamaican 
mango and lime or whatever the hell it's called you was just over that because i think the jamaica jamaican uh mango and lime uh, leaves residue in my opinion i used to get residue when i used it so i would say use this over that and next i have this which is called crinkles and curls it's also by talia wajid so the same person that made makes this this is really good uh for creating that crinkle dreadlock look that you see a lot of people wear so when your hair is still wet um you want to take this product put it on your hair it's a mousse and then either twist it twist your locks together or braid them whatever you want to do leave them on leave them in until they fully dry um you can send her a dryer however I think it's best to probably leave them in for two days and then take them out and you have these crinkles. And lastly, something I really am loving are, you know, these types of clips here. I call them um, alligator clips. But I really like these. And I also use the two prong clips as well. The two prong clips are really good at reinforcing and keeping the hair in place but if um you have like a hard to reach area these kind of could sneak right in and they're really good for like hard to reach areas they also don't take up a lot of surface space so if you have locks that um that kind of already like the ones in the back for me kind of already lay flat so then i'll use this because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it doesn't pull it doesn't snag on the on other clips you know so that's those are products that i'm really loving for my dreadlocks and yeah that's about it please comment if you would like subscribe if you want like thumbs up